Welcome to Language is Your Superpower, where we explore topics related to language use in today's world and showcase subject matter experts who offer helpful insights on the impact of language proficiency in the workplace, marketplace, and community. This episode is brought to you by Language Testing International. So good morning, Benet. This is Lisa March. I'm with Language Testing International, and thank you so much for joining us today. I am really uh, thrilled to learn more about you, your role at at and and the role of language testing at your organization. Um, thank you again for joining us. Of course, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here and, you know, great to, great to always talk to you. So, Benet, in your role as a senior IO psychologist working on the HR research team, can you give us some insight into the kinds of things that you do in your role and some background on how your coursework supports the work that you do every day? Sure. Yeah. So um, I guess I'll approach this uh, chronologically. So my, my background is in industrial organizational psychology. I have my master's degree and my doctorate from Louisiana Tech University. Um, basically, after uh, you know, completing my master's, I've been consulting internally and externally for about four years, you know, spanning across both public and private sector. Um, and, a, and the bulk of my experience has really been in the employee selection and assessment development and, and validation area. So um, pretty much what I do in at and really deals with that space, right? Uh, I, I serve as an internal consultant and partnering with stakeholders from across the business, um, you know, lead various projects that have a, a direct impact on our customer experience. Um, so my, the team that I'm on focuses on the development and maintenance of these assessments and really other quantitative and, and qualitative tools that are based on the science of biopsychology and, and the research. Um, and they're really used across the business. Um, so, you know, it's it's pretty much a, a one-to-one translation of, of where my educational background is and, and really what I do here uh, at, at AT&T. It really sounds like important work. And, and I know, congratulations, you recently uh, graduated. Um, you got your degree. Tell me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about that and, and uh, what it is that, that you study and maybe how long you study it for and not just the advantages to the business in terms of ensuring that your staff is well prepared, but it has to be great even for the employees to have a way to benchmark where they are and maybe where they want to go. Yeah, yeah. So really, the the selection and assessment spaces, <laughs> excuse me, it's it's really important. It's it's crucial to you know to how businesses is, is conducted nowadays. So. From, from the business side of it, right? We wanna make sure that the people that are entering are really prepared to do the work. So, um, you know, there isn't that much time to catch up or, or hit the ground running. Um, but from the, you know, employee side, we, we really work hard to build reliable and valid assessments. Um, so we're really measuring only the things that are job related. So only the things that determine success and performance on the job. And, and really not any external characteristics or anything like that, that humans are normally biased um, when they're making these judgments. So uh, it, it's really built towards um, having a fair process for both the, the company and, and the employee. Um, and, and, you know, it allows employees to really showcase the skills that they have uh, it, rather than <laughs> being conscientious about, you know, anything else that uh, they may think that the company is trying to, you know, to measure or if there are any biases in that process. But um, t- talking a little bit more about the the educational aspect, um, it, it takes anywhere from, you know, three to, well, how, however long it takes for you to, to finish and defend your dissertation. But there's about over 90 or 99 hours of co- coursework that goes into uh, becoming an IO psychologist. So, um, especially within my experience, uh, we, we, you know, we study both sides of, of I and O um, and, and not just focus on, on one aspect because it's, it's, it's a field that, that looks at both sides of the coin and, you know, it gives us a more 
accurate picture of, of how to apply our science and, and practice of psychology in the organization. So ultimately, all of that builds to, as, as Sia describes it, you know, building a smarter and more, you know, scientific-based um, work workplace. So all in all, I hope I answered all of your questions. You had a few, but... Uh, yeah, no, that absolutely covers it all. Because again, when we think about assessment, unless you're actually in the assessment business, you think of assessment as something that you can prepare and study for. But really, assessment in the workplace in our experience, has been what you said. What skills and knowledge do you bring that you've acquired over time? And so when we started working with LTI, it was so interesting to me that, that language is just that, right? You can study it at school, you can get a degree, and you could have studied a language. But in order to really... Uh, measure what you can do with language, you need to have a fair and reliable assessment instrument and process. Mm -hmm. And so if you could tell me a little bit about, you know, how you use language testing to, to measure and assess all of the things that you described and to make it a fair, a fair process. Yeah. So, you know, I'll start, I'll start from the beginning here. I, I speak three languages myself, in, including English, and um, I'd say I'm probably the most proficient in English, uh, although Gujarati was my first language and, and Hindi was, you know, kind of learned uh, alongside of English. So if just putting myself in the scenario, if I was interviewing for somebody uh, for, for a job that requires them to speak Hindi proficiently, I will, I'll be honest, I think I speak it well. But whenever I do uh, speak it to people that are truly proficient, they're they're looking at me like, "Wow, you you butchered pretty much every every word or sentence that you've said." So if I am using my judgment of what I think is good in any selection process, it's going to be flawed. I'm going to select people that you know are are similar to my level, and that may not really meet the demands of the job. So. You know, it's it's especially important for us to use a, a reliable and, and validated test that are based on standards um, to, to really assess proficiency because you know we all we all think we know what's good, but the question is, is it is it really good? Um, and so until we study that and until we have that standard, you know, we, we really can't say uh, that we're measuring proficiency here. And so the the way that language testing is, you know, is used here is, is primarily within customer facing positions. So that, that would be, you know, call center and, and retail space. Excuse me. Understood. So, oh, sorry, I had to call. No, I was going to say, no worries, no worries. Understood. Um, and I was going to ask you, at what point um, do you start to employ language assessment? Is it during the interview process? Is it for the final folks that you plan to make an offer to, or as you started to say, is it based on the, the job when an essay test? Yeah, so that's a, that's a really good question. And I, I normally hate to give a it depends response, but I think it, it really fits here because um, it, it really depends on how the business chooses to use that language assessment, right? So you could employ it within the selection process before an offer is given to determine proficiency, which, you know, would ideally and, you know, I guess required tied to uh, what's, you know, what the minimal qualifications are for the job. Or if a company or an organization is going to train on it or, you know, use that language assessment for any kind of developmental feedback, it would be used post offer. So it would be used within their, their development plan. Um, so speaking of, of just the selection part, um, you know, that's, that's another decision that somebody at the, 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 on an HR team or an assessment professional would have to make is really what makes the most sense. Um, you know, you have costs to consider. So if you're really in a high volume, you know, space, it, it's probably not the best idea to implement a language assessment right in the front and center when there might be other qualifications, other minimal qualifications that 
you know, would, would be prioritized over it. So, um, you know, to, to kind of wrap that up, it, it depends on, on cost. It depends on, you know, the, the strategy for selection, um, or, you know, it depends on if you just want to use it as a, as a developmental tool to kind of shape the person into a role. That makes sense. It, that makes a lot of sense. And so when you think about how you go about choosing the most, the best partner to mm -hmm. deploy assessments with, what are the kinds of things that you make sure are criteria for your selection process in picking assessment partners? Yeah. So first and foremost, I, I want to make sure that the test that they are using or, or have developed are are reliable and valid. I want to make sure that data has been collected on how you know how good they are at doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, so really, they have to be demonstrated. And the, the second step would be to uh, make sure that you know there is room built in for validating these assessments locally. So I'd want data from you know the people that are applying at this company and um, and seeing how the test functions as well and, and monitor that as we move along. But the, the other thing that, that is something to consider is, is cost, right? So it, it's, it's a business and you want to make sure that um, the test ultimately is providing utility. So if, if the costs are, are you know, right where they're supposed to be and you are getting you know, enough juice for the squeeze, that's, that's something that, that I would consider when, when choosing an assessment partner. Um, the third thing would be, you know, time to hire is a very important metric. We want to make sure that our candidate experience is as positive as possible. Um, so, you know, I want to make sure that the scores that are turned around, um, so the amount of time, time that it takes for us to know if a candidate is qualified or not qualified in, in a particular language, has to be fairly quick. Um, and the way that the candidate interacts with it and walks away from the assessment um, you know, I would want data around around that if they if they view it as a positive experience or if they viewed it as something that was unfair and um, you know really not job related. So um, to to kind of take another step in in IO psychology, you know, we we measure different types of validity, um, and the one that's you know often ridiculed by academics is face validity. Because mm -hmm. basically it's looking at a test and saying, yeah, it looks like it's measuring what it's measuring. Um, but that's really important from a candidate standpoint, right? So if you're applying for a job, let's say you want to be a forklift operator, and I'm asking you questions that have nothing to do with forklift operations, you're not going to think the process is fair. I could have all the science behind it that says that it predicts performance, but if candidates think they're being cheated out of something, that's not something your company wants to um, you know, necessarily endorse or, or use. Absolutely. So that's really, I would imagine, critical in fair assessment of what someone can do with their language skills based on the job. And so at at and do you have custom language assessments that you're deploying based on a job? Or do you work with somebody at LTI to ensure that the questions are appropriate for the either the level of job or the type of job? Yeah, so, um, you know, before implementing any kind of, of assessment, again, um, we want to collect data to ensure that, you know, the assessment is valid and reliable and job related. Um, so, you know, that was one of the first things that, that was done is to determine, uh, you know, relevancy to the position, but also at what level does the language need to be spoken to kind of meet the minimal qualifications, right? So we want to make sure that the people, <coughs> excuse me, the people that are coming in through the door can can communicate with the customer in another language if, if they have to, and that they provide a good customer experience. So the decision is made at, with, with the customer at heart. Um, so really those, those two things are, are absolutely necessary. Um, you know, making sure that the customer is is happy with with our service, but also making sure that we are doing you know everything in our step to to ensure that um, all of the things that the test is measuring are are tied to the job. Right, we deal a lot with test 
takers, right? People who have uh, taken the test and gotten a certificate. And so often we hear that they're really able to leverage their language credential in either getting a job or getting a promotion. Mm -hmm. And they really do appreciate the fact that it was done by a third party and that the test is very practical, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a speaking test, um, then they have an interview via a call. If it's a writing test, they're writing prompts that are typically related to a pre-survey questionnaire and the same for reading and listening. And at the end of the process, they have confidence. This certificate Mm -hmm. gives them the confidence, like you said, to know that if they're staying there proficient and they're going to be exposed to um, tasks that require a certain level of language, that they can go into the job knowing they've checked all the boxes that are required. And so it really is both sides, I think, benefit from having this um, unbiased opinion. Do you you agree? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it it does in turn provide a credential, right? You know, whenever you pass the SATs or or GRE or something like that, you know, if you get a high score, you're you're proud of it. It's like this this was a a measure of, you know, aptitude and and this is where I lie. Um uh, of course the <laughs> the the opposite would probably be true if they're really not proficient, but um you know, I I just realized I didn't answer one of your other questions in terms of of how you know, how, how it's used here. Um, so, you know, within the call center and, and retail spaces, we do, we do ensure that the questions that are asked are, are really, you know, custom to the business. So they are, you know, conversations that you would have in a call center space or conversations or topics that would come up in a retail space. So um, it's not really just general, how well can you speak? Or, you know, if you're using slang terms or anything like that, it's, really specific and and tied to the business. It really is amazing. I'm sure there was a lot of work done to be sure that the assessment um, met the needs of both the business and the employees. One of the things that we uh, sometimes, I don't want to use um, struggle with, but some of the conversations that we have on a pretty regular basis are, oh, the name speaks Spanish. I'm going to go... What we do at our company is we have Lisa interview with Renee for 15 minutes. And if he says that she's proficient, then we trust his judgment. And feedback on that type of assessment um, for job placement and or for assessing whether someone really has the, particularly the language skills, right? I mean, if you Mm -hmm. had to give a word of advice, to companies that don't have somebody like you that, that, I mean, you clearly know the science, you know, the research, you know how to pick a, an, an assessment partner, but for smaller, medium sized businesses, or frankly, even big businesses who don't really understand what's involved in language testing, what, what advice would you give them around, you know, doing this kind of in-house homegrown testing? Yeah, so this this goes back to the 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 Hindi speaking example I gave earlier here with uh you know, uh, if if I think that I speak it well and the person I'm interviewing is speaking currently at the level that I'm speaking, um you know, it it might not meet the needs of the business or you know really the the levels that's required to be successful on the job. Um so for I don't want to, you know, just blanket cross out homegrown assessments because if if the work has been done to tie it to job relevancy, um, if they've developed rating criteria on, you know, what, uh, you know, what proficiency is, and they have all of that clearly defined, um, then, you know, good. But for, for somebody that doesn't have the background to really tie that in there, um, to tie what, what actually is proficient and what's not proficient, if they're not using um, you know, standardized criteria or something like that, you could really be getting yourself into a, a quite a bit of trouble, right? Um, you know, you could be assessing things that seem like you're assessing language, but, you know, it, it could be it could be full of bias here and there. Um, so r- really the advice that, that I would give is, um, you know, <laughs> be careful with, with homegrown assessments. Uh, really, if 
if you're trying to measure language profici proficiency, do, do your research. So go, go online to see what language proficiency is, what, what's, uh, how it's defined, um, what's required within your company, um, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of things to look at here before you just dive in and, and make a homegrown assessment. And, and the good thing about, you know, some, some vendors are that they've, they've done that work. It's, it's their bread and butter. They use standard measures of what proficiency is. Um, you know, they've done a lot of the, the research on the back end with different languages. Um, so it, it might be a lot easier than, than trying to develop something, you know, in-house. Agreed. Language Testing International works very closely and administers actual assessments. So we are the exclusive licensee of ACTFL. And like you said, it is years and years of research and subject matter expertise and norming tests and making sure that they're valid and reliable. And I think we've crossed, you know, 6 million test takers um, over the last 27 years. So it isn't something that's necessarily easy to, um, to, to instrument and curate and devise without a ton of subject matter expertise and people, right? Taking mm -hmm. the test to, to really understand uh, how, to, ta how to calibrate them. So I really appreciate um, all the insight that you've given us into how you're using language testing at, at AT&T. And we're really looking forward to maybe presenting with you at a conference and learning a lot more about the science um, of language testing and, and how it really does uh, provide a tremendous benefit, not only to the company, but to the employees and, and ultimately to your customers. So we've really enjoyed our time with you. It's been super informative and we welcome you back to a, another segment. I want to do a um, bias, testing testing bias and, and how we can mm -hmm. help eliminate that. You sound like you certainly know how to make sure that, that it's all a very... Um, fair process. And that's certainly a, a topic that we're always really interested in. So thank you, Vinay. Thank you so much. Um, we look forward to speaking to you again. Of course. I'm, I'm happy to help. I had a lot of fun here and, you know, I'm excited for the, uh, you know, our, our upcoming opportunities to work. So thank, thank you for having me. Have a great day. You too. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Language is Your Superpower. If you have any questions or need immediate information regarding how to assess your personal level of language proficiency or the skills of your employees, visit our website at www.languagetesting.com. Thanks so much for joining us.